the bad man in this whole affair, believe it or not, if there is one, is the United States. They are not supporting us. They are undermining us at every turn. They are trying desperately to preserve our, our enemies, the Amalekim, so that they can live I, you just for another day. You just reminded me of something when you referred to them as Amalekim, which of course is true. The, the term refers uh, in, in Jewish uh, Torah parlance to, to any, any group or nation or organization, any ideology that is determined to destroy the Jewish people. So uh, the, the famous statement of the Torah in this context is in Hebrew, Zachor et asher asalecha Amalek. Remember and do not forget that which Amalek did to you. So I heard uh, another version of this today. Zachor et asher asalecha Amalaksa, the, the nation of Al-Aqsa. Am Amalaksa. Amalaksa. Yes. Let us turn now to uh, another report that I saw recently. There is some uh, representative, um, some pen pusher and uh, e evildoer in the United, St United States State Department, which has to be, uh, it has to be stated openly, is one of the most evil organizations on the planet. No question. And always has been. It should also be pointed out, certainly, certainly since... Uh, uh, Second World War, but even before that, there is a person in that uh, diabolical organization, the U.S. State Department, who is claiming that the the, the uh, Arab claims, totally distorted, without basis, that Israeli soldiers molest Arab, sexually molest and and even rape. Apparently, this is the claim. Arab women. Uh, this, there is a U.S. State Department representative or official who is who is claiming these these claims are these statements are true. What do you what do you make of that? Um, I first found out about this when my my very good friend, uh, Brigadier General Amir Avivi, who is the head of a great organization called Habit Tonistim. I should just explain. Habit Tonistim is the Hebrew term for a a security-oriented uh, organization of uh, ex-military um, personnel you know. who have been discussing and and uh, and suggesting uh, for years how how Israel should and must deal with its security uh, situation. It's a very great organization that we should all be thankful uh, exists. Well, Amir went to Washington a few days ago and discussed with a lady in the State Department who is the, the head of the desk that handles Israel-Palestinian affairs. She's the highest State Department official that has been tasked with handling these affairs. And she came out with these horrific statements as fact, these allegations as facts. And Amir, according to his own uh, explanation of what happened um, on I-24 and on FM 103 here in Israel, was horrified, horrified that someone at that level has accepted these horrific lies about the conduct of our holy warriors. Now, my response to this was this is nothing new. She's been saying this actually sotto voce, quietly, for a couple of weeks. Now, if I knew about it, certainly my betters in the Israeli foreign ministry and in the prime minister's office should have known about it. And based on that knowledge, they should have told Blinken, you're not welcome here until you do something about this woman who's, who is disseminating Hamas lies about our soldiers, our sacred, holy warriors. Don't come here. Speaking don't, don't. Of, yes, of course, you're, you're quite right, of course. Speaking of, so, of mm -hmm. evil, uh, evil women, I will mention another very evil woman. In this case, a Jewish woman, unfortunately, to our chagrin and uh, shame. Her name is Tal Nitzan, mm -hmm. 
And in 2007, this, this is what I would have said if I was that uh, Brigadier General friend of your, um, uh, yours, Amir, uh, what's his last name? Avivi. Avivi, Amir Avivi. I would have said to him, you should have mentioned the, the following. <laughs> Uh, oh this, is, this, this is for real. Your people had done. I know. Some this people is might not be, No, you this, better, you happens, better say this is. We happen to be at the the tail end of Purim, but this is not a Purim spiel. This is the this is for real. In the year two thousand and seven, uh, in the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, there is of course a faculty for uh, uh, social studies, and there is a fact there is a department for of sociology and anthropology, and the. Uh, Shine Center for uh, Research in, in these fields of, of sociology and anthropology, blah, 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 which are you know, probably nowadays essentially dealing with, uh, with gender studies or, uh, or um, uh, who knows, um, who, one, one, one shudders to think. Diversity, even, diversity representation. One, one shudders to think what, what it is that goes on in these departments. Uh, but this, but going back already quite some time, two thousand and seven, which means we're talking uh, seventeen years ago, a woman by the name of Tal Nitzan wrote a thesis, which claimed to investigate the following question: How is it possible that there are so few? That's what she writes. So few. I claim the true number is zero. And zero. There has never been any documented. Uh, substantiated evidence of any such thing, but she her her thesis dealt with the question: How is it possible that there are so few uh, cases of Israeli Jewish soldiers raping Arab women? Because we all know that this is what this is what armies do wherever they go. I mean, we all we, we all we're all quite certain that American soldiers did it in Af Afghanistan and in Vietnam and in and in Germany, by the way, after the war. And, and, and we're not talk, even talking about what Russian soldiers did in Berlin after the war. We won't, <laughs> we won't even go there. Uh, so how is it possible that there are no reports, I'm saying zero, she says extremely rare, uh, reports of Israeli soldiers raping or molesting Arab women? What was her, the result of her uh, thesis, would you like to guess? That we were racist? Oh, how did you guess? Exactly. <laughs> her conclusion was that this is clear-cut evidence how uh, racist and anti-Arab Israeli society and, and therefore wow. soldiers are. Wow. Otherwise, there's no possible explanation how this could be the case. It must only it can only be explained by, by means of the claim that we are so racist and we so hate Arabs so much <laughs> that they won't even touch their women. This, this is true. So now this is being reversed. This is being turned on its head. Now we are guilty of this. So so let's get this straight. Let's figure this out once and for all. Who's right? Is Tal Nitsan with a doctoral thesis correct? Or are, or are these fabricated claims that are being mentioned now correct? I will have to bring this to General Avivi, Brigadier General Avivi's attention. But by the way, she managed to write 201 pages. I have it in front of me on, on the screen. 201 pages, her thesis is uh, extends over, over yes but, she, but it took knowing, 201 pages to reach that conclusion just a second knowing these guys first of all the uh forward the introduction is about a third which is thanking everybody for the opportunity to to write this piece thanking then you george, have thanking george soros and thanking uh, george soros and, and the wexner and, Foundation. and the bill and bill and, and, and melinda gates Foundation. Melinda gates and the rockefeller and, brothers and everything else and, and then the, you have the, 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 Wex, the wexner foundation and the un etc uh, etc et right. no yeah. doubt no 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 UNRWA, no doubt which is an arm of of hamas probably also and, helped her out with this so then you have a massive bibliography at the end uh if I if I know this uh, this field as a, as well as I do, most of them are of dubious quality <laughs> or questionable quality in uh, magazine or in uh, publications that are not uh, well. Let's just put it this way: they're not exactly on the top not, tier. Not si not serious. Not serious, and and so you you may have fifteen, twenty, thirty pages of of the actual thesis um i you know i i could write something like that without any problem um but again the bottom line on this is this is a blood libel it it fulfills all the the qualifications of a blood libel and it should have figured 
prominently in discussions between Bibi and Blinken before Blinken came here. That Bibi should have told him, you know, you've been beating us over the head because of the inclusion of two uh, very fine conservative politicians, the Salah Smatric and uh, Itamar Ben Gavir, in our government. Well, we have a problem with your government also in the form of this lady who is disseminating Hamas propaganda about our soldiers. And we really don't want to talk to you until you do something about it, perhaps by firing her or at least denying the accuracy of what she's saying and telling her to be quiet. But, you know, this is a problem with the Israeli government. We just don't know how to push back. That's the problem. And it's something like this, this egregious accusation against our soldiers, which personally, I, I, I'm sorry I did this, but I saw it coming a few weeks ago when the UN grudgingly admitted or acknowledged that there was some truth to the um, fact that Hamas committed sexual crimes against our, our people uh, during their October 7th invasion. Um, I knew I mean, the first thing I said was there's going to be a countervailing uh, accusation made against the Israeli soldiers to, for balance. They've done this in the territories with this lie of Jewish violence, rising Jewish violence to establish a, a kind of moral equivalence between this fictional Jewish violence and what the Arabs have been doing. Well, since time immemorial, but lately it's been escalating. Well, let's, terms let's, of, speak, let's speak about the last 200 years. 200 years ago, years. really 200 years ago, and over 200 years ago, there were uh, Arab Bedouin raids on, on Jewish towns and Jewish travelers here in our land. This was before Zionism. This was, before, this was under the Ottoman Empire. Um, this is just half of the course. Look, Today, um, Al there was an accusation against our army that we took a, uh, a medical technician or a nurse and put them in a stress position and abused them. And it, it was disseminated by Al Jazeera, the New York Times of the Gulf, as I call it. Um, and what happened, strangely enough, Hamas denied that it happened. OK. Um, and Al Jazeera just disappeared the piece. Why did what 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 happened there with this claim? Well, it seemed it was having a, a very deleterious effect on the willingness of the Arabs to stick around. They were getting someplace. It reminded me almost of what happened, how the lie of the massacre of Dir Yassin, which was made up of a, out of whole cloth by an Arab leader in Yerushalayim at the time backfired. He thought that by lying about the, the this alleged fictional massacre, he would somehow engender additional support from regional Arab states in their fight against, uh, in the war of liberation that we had, the war of independence. And it backfired because what happened was the descriptions of the massacre were so gruesome and so horrible that it started the stampede of local Arabs out of the area. Despite well, the fact that such a thing never took place. That's why I said it was, as, as the title of a book that came recently out on this, the massacre that never occurred. Never. So here you have a situation where Hamas, mindful of what had happened back in 1948, came out with a statement saying this never happened. But of course, who's carrying this? Who's discussing it? Who's analyzing it? Nobody. It just went away. And this is why I'm, I'm not in favor of fighting these claims because we can't win. We have to just act on them when we can, such as conditioning Blinken's uh, visit here to him cleaning up the State Department. But, but that's like, you know, who was it? Um, um, you know, cleaning the the, the Algian stables, you know, have, having, you know, somebody go in there and, and you know, clean the stables out in Greek mythology. Um, it isn't going to work. 
honestly, what no, I've been talking whatever, about. Whatever we say or do, whatever the facts are, it will never work because it will never work. This even is even though the, the Arabs have been involved in, in a campaign and war of genocide against us, and that is clear and plain for any reasonable, uh, sincere person to, to observe and to admit to. The fact is, we are now, wherever you look in, in international media, we're being accused of a war of genocide where no such thing has happened, but that's what we were accused of. If, if, if they um, engage in, in mass. Uh, system, systematic rape and, se and sexual abuse uh, and things that are beyond description. Uh, if, if they do that to us, and that is clear and documented and there are eyewitness reports, then in, we will, in short order, as you said, uh, it has to be balanced and it can't, can't be that, that, that we're the good guys. So, so we're do obviously doing it to, the, to, Israel, to uh, Arab women. We, well, look at this example. To, to imagine that we can somehow uh, achieve uh, a, a situation in which we are supported and uh, and legitimized and and uh, the truth is accepted by by the majority of the powers that be in the world for, for what it is that is that is pure fantasy that's Alice in Wonderland can't do it what is the difference between the international reaction to what ISIS did to countless numbers of Yazidi women? and what Hamas did to our women in the Gaza envelope. The difference was the, um, the victims of Hamas were Jews. That's the difference. That's why the international community went crazy over what happened to the Yazidi women and who've been quiet and even refuting the, the fact that it did occur. There's this horrible, uh, the militarization. Claiming there's, no, claiming there's no evidence. We haven't seen it proof. There is no evidence at all. 